John, firstly, thank you for the invitation to John Hyde Engineering here today. You're based in Stoke, a fabulous company here. I mean, you have some, uh, some machine tools, but the story really here is about the automation, Mazak's automation. You embraced it a couple of decades ago. Could you tell us why you embarked on that automation journey? Well, it was a needs must, actually. We were in, uh, using old machines which weren't capable of meeting the tolerances and the times required for modern production. They weren't competitive. And it was a double or quit situation. We looked for what was available uh, around the world, uh, came along to Mazak, uh, who had a, uh, and this was very important to us, it was a, a single supplier solution uh, for the Palatec and the machines, the controls, single su source supplier. We didn't want the conflict between the control manufacturer and the machine tool builder, which had existed in the past. And, and this was back in 2001, and it wasn't um, a, a, a straight, easy path, was it, once you'd had it installed, because there was a few hiccups in the road with, with customers and stuff like that. Can you, can you tell us about that side? Well, we're at the bottom of the pile. We're a subcontractor, and our customers at the time uh, had a bit of a fetish for going off to low-cost countries. And uh, although we got an award uh, in, while the FMS was being installed for world-class supplier grade A, uh, from one customer, uh, two months later they told us it was all going to China. <laughs> and the great thing about this, and, and you telling us that, is, is how, how the automation is then adapted to give you the abilities to go and get more work. Yes, well, life is a series of accidents, and accidents happened, and some of them are good, um, and other work turned up. Uh, we installed the machine, well it arrived on the 4th of September 2001, a date I remember and will always remember, uh, on time. Uh, by the middle of October, we were running lights out. And it's important um, to, to ask you that question, to hear that, because it just shows you that by having the automation in the FMS, you were able to go out and get new work from new customers. Yes, well, the uh, cost of production with new modern machines was lower than with old worn-out machines. And that was the first uh, part of the equation. We were competitive again. Uh, then, of course, we had started from a low level. We threw everything we had at that uh, installation, and it was a double or quit situation. Uh, as it happened, it worked, even though we lost customers, although it took a year or two longer than they expected, but we gained other better customers, of course. Uh, wh why do you think that is with automation? Do is it because it allows you to really just run lights out, or it, uh, it gives you a better quality part? Wh what's, the, um, what's the benefits to you, John? Well, by comparison with what we had before, we had a, a more accurate parts, therefore less uh, anxiety and less scrap uh, and more compliance with the drawing. Uh, and by the way, in those days, we thought we were compliant with the drawing in every respect, but uh, when we installed better CMMs, we discovered we were very marginal in that respect and every manufacturer will have had that same experience, I expect. And, and we're going to go on to talk about the new machine that you're just having installed yeah. as we speak. It just shows you that you started this journey almost two decades ago and, and almost 20 years on, it's just continued, hasn't it? Now tell me about this particular machine that we have behind us. This is a 16 pallet FMS, is it? Yes, indeed. Uh, this is, we're standing on the site of that first FMS from 2001, which we sold in 2017 uh, and uh, installed this one in uh, the end of 2017 only because we wanted to put a different style of machine. It was still running correctly, everything was correct to drawing, and the, the machines were still within specification. What was the different style? Well, vertical five-axis machine. The, those original ones were two horizontals. Uh, we needed more capacity for five-axis. Of course, when it's 16 years old, it's uh, getting tired, and we didn't want to go into the next boom with the worn-out machinery. And the fact that it's a new machine, it's going to be faster. I know this has got turning capability on it as well, hasn't it? Yes, yes it has, and a full five axis, and also bigger diameter. We've got the largest workpiece we've ever worked on, a job which is turned 1250 diameter. So there's not much you can't do with this cell as it stands here? Um, it's all about cap the capability of the people, and uh, the people we've got are very capable and learning all the time, of course, and that's part of the equation too. Uh, how, how much has Mazak changed since your first installation in 2001 to this one, which is yeah, still less than six months old? Um, they've not changed a lot. Um, uh, they still deliver the performance that they did in those early days. Um, I mean, what can one say? It arrived on time, it performed to specification. What more do you want? And we talk about the advantages of having automation, but you would have learned a hell of a lot over the last uh, 15 years or so. 
what are the potential problems or obstacles that people have to consider when they're, when they're introducing FMS into their workplace? Well, the most important thing is self-discipline, and I mean by that that you use the, all the capability of the equipment you bought, <clears throat> for example, adaptive control, broken tool detect, uh, lengthening of tools offline, uh, and all the things which are going to prevent things going wrong, and, or if they do go wrong, prevent any harm and damage. That's key um, in some of the components that we look at that are, are being manufactured around your works because there is a lot of uh, material cost involved in some of the parts, I'm sure. So you've gone on the journey of, of introducing things like you probe uh, clamps and things like that, don't you, just to make sure that, that the tools aren't going to hit them and things like that. Can you maybe elaborate on, on those areas? Well, automation is about eliminate, amongst other things, eliminating human input. Um, and clamping the job onto the uh, fixture is a human input and we humans are not as reliable as machines and therefore we recognize that and the probability may be one in a thousand but one in a thousand is too much for us so we probe to make sure the clamp is not present when the uh, or not in the wrong position at least I should say. And then some might argue that by doing the, those processes and more that you do uh, you're adding time onto the, the cycle of the machining of the part. Is that not therefore a negative? It certainly is, but um, it's a, a positive too, because if you have a crash, you might be down for a week and it might cost you 20, 30 or 40,000 pounds. Well, OK, it's better to spend an extra pound on each component and not have those unforeseen. Uh, those unforeseen not only have a cash cost, but they have a, a customer delivery cost. And most of what we produce is uh, produced for delivery the next day or the day after. Uh, and when you are running uh, lights out like you do, the, the, the consideration I always look at as well that often is overlooked is the amount of tools that you have on the machine because you need sister tooling potentially if you get tool wear. Are those other areas that you would encourage uh, other engineers to consider? Yes, certainly. In our case, we're, we're cutting mainly cast iron and some steels and tool life is sufficient for lights out. Uh, very, uh, with some very few exceptions, in which case we would have and do have sister tooling. Uh, and we often talk at MTD about the more spindles you can get, the better. So we, we, we talk about workshops that, you know, all that they've, they've got a, a spare few feet there. Could they put another lathe in? Could they put another VMC in? But what we're sort of demonstrating here or illustrating is the fact that maybe it's not always about the spindle. If you've got one spindle with 16 pallets, is that more efficient than having three spindles back to back? Well, typically when you have three spindles back to back and one man operating, that you're running at maybe 50% if you're quite good we usually get 100% uptime over a week here. That's fantastic, 100%. I don't think it really gets any better than that, does it? And also this does illustrate the types of diversity of parts that you can have on this system. This isn't all about multiple batches of the same component, is it? This is about you you putting the, 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 the work you need to get out of the factory on the machine at the right time or whenever you can. Yes, but the, the most efficient quantity uh, of, uh, per month of each part is 40. And the reason is you have two lights out periods per day and uh, two shifts um, and, the, and 20 days in the month. And that is the most efficient way to use your FMS. Machining cast iron most of the time, um, does that have an impact on the maintenance of the machine? Because it's a pretty, pretty horrible sort of material to be continuing machining. How do you keep, keep these machines in working order? Well, we worked with Mazak and ourselves to um, develop the swarf management systems to cope with it. And it's a continuous process and we haven't achieved perfection yet, but we've made massive strides over the last 15 years. A, a few words on the, uh, the technology of the machine outside of the, the loading here. What would you have to say about the, the new Integrex E1250V that you've got here and other machines that are being introduced? Well, they've, every step is incremental. They've taken some of the features from the old machines which were uh, perhaps a bit pedestrian, speeded them up. They've put new features on uh, which have been va are valuable. Um, and generally speaking, it's the same but more. Skill levels as well. Uh, does this help you or hinder you in the fact that now you don't need maybe as many skills? Or do you still need those skills? You need the skills for setting up, of course, and, and, and everything's got to be perfect in the setup. Uh, and therefore, you need more skill, perhaps, because there's no one there to watch it and hear it. 
but uh, you need different skills for the people operating the machines. Uh, they're loading, they're unloading, they're gauging, and they're there to make sure that everything is running perfectly and they've got to notice little things. John, you're, you're fourth generation, I believe, here at John Hyde Engineering. I, I would like to know, and also for, for you to tell our audience, one of the first things you said to me when I came here today was that you predicted two months ago correctly that we were going to have two a... Two years ago. Two years ago, sorry. Yes. We were going to have a manufacturing boom. That has happened. Why did you think that was going to be the case? Well, we'd been in recession worldwide, uh, or at least levelling out on the bottom, for so many years after the financial crisis that inevitably demand was going to return for oil and gas, mining, uh, uh, machinery, and, and so on. And it, uh, we saw that it was the, the first signs were there a couple of years ago, and we would ordinarily have ordered machines at that time to cope with the next boom but we delayed it a, a, an extra year because we weren't absolutely certain and now rather regret it because uh, it, the boom came more quickly than uh, and more steeply than expected and you've got a brand new new installation happening as we speak what is that and what is that going to service that uh, is a two machine installation with an orbitec which is unique in europe i believe a mazak machine uh, and an HCN 6800 horizontal machining centre for a particular project that we've won uh, 10 years after first quoting it. Wow, OK. Now, the, the installation is happening as we speak. Has everything gone smoothly uh, to this stage? Because I know you did say to me the beauty of purchasing the Mazak is the fact it's all one integrated. Well, it's everything from one company. Well, that, that is the case. Uh, in fact, we had the machines before the Palatec. The Palatec was on a longer lead time, and that has been a bit of a nuisance. It's not Mazak's fault, but it, it's a nuisance because we ran the machines, did the prototypes in the first production runs, and now we're down for three or four weeks whilst the installation is completed. Uh, but everything out of your control and Mazak's as well. Um, that crystal ball that you looked in two years ago, I'm going to ask you to look in it again now and tell me where we're going to be in two years' time with UK manufacturing, and not just UK manufacturing, John Hyde Engineering. Well, rather foggy. There are some very great uncertainties around with a, a president of the US who is uh, apt to do things which are unforeseen, not necessarily bad, uh, but unforeseen. Uh, Brexit is going to cause some changes a lot of vindictive behaviour on the continent about us and that kind of strengthens us somewhat, it strengthens our resolve. Um, we, because we're uh, in the position we are at the bottom of the chain, rise and fall with our customers. Uh, but we're in a position now where we know that uh, our principal customers have long lead times, long order books, and there are new customers wishing they could get in here, so we believe we can remain buoyant for a long time yet. I'll take that as uh, good times ahead. Thank you very much for your time today, John. Thank you.